Hi, Craig. Great meeting, wasn't it? Boy, it really fires you up to go out and do some missionary work. Yeah, sure. Scares me to death, actually. How great will be your joy if you should bring many souls unto me. And to stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places that ye may be in. I've got a big responsibility. I've already made a commitment to be a witness just by being baptized. But I don't know how to do it. Maureen and I and the kids We've got to move out to bigger circles, make more good friends with non-members. The trouble is, it scares me to death to approach them about the gospel. Well, join the crowd. What? I said, join the crowd. A lot of people are pretty frightened about it. They are? Uh, well, sure, I guess they are. I, I mean, how do I, Craig Jolly, regular old member, sell people on the gospel. You don't. You don't sell. You love. Well, how do I convert them then? You don't convert them. The power of the Spirit helping them recognize truth. That's what converts them. Oh, yes, but I... <laughs> Better keep walking. I don't want to make you late. Okay, uh, keep talking. You already know most of what I'm going to say anyway if you'd stop and think about it. Like what? Well, you're already doing missionary work. Did you know that? I haven't gotten a single person to take the missionary lessons. Yet. But you're working on it. Look, what is missionary work anyway? Well, um, I would say sharing the gospel. Right. And sharing the gospel means you give messages to a friend, like you've been doing with the Harrises. But I haven't. You helped him fix his car last week, didn't you? Your wife took over a dinner when Mrs. Harris was sick, didn't she? And your children walk home from school with their kids every day, don't they? Well, uh, sure, but... You're sending messages. You're telling the Harrises you care about them. That's the first step in missionary work, and you're doing it. It is? I am? Besides, you may not have noticed it, but they watch you pretty carefully. They do when? Oh, well, lots of times. They think you're a pretty exceptional family, but they're a little shy to tell you that. Now, what if you could have some big successes with the Harrises? Well, that's what I dream about. I want you to know, I found out for myself, this church, Bishop, our lives have changed so much since we came into the church. It can happen. Some people like yourself have brought dozens of people into the church. Do you want to see what it feels like? Yes. But, but I'm uh, still not very sure of myself. Well, what if I show you a simple way to give messages to your friends that will build up love and trust and interest? Would you like that? Of course. You're committed? Sure, if you show me what to do. That's what's held me back all these years. Not knowing really what to do or what to say. You show me that and I'm with you all the way. Discuss as a group your own fears about missionary work. Discuss the commitments you've already made to the Lord through baptism and other covenants. Stop the tape, discuss your ideas, then start the tape and go on. Well, here we are. Uh, where do we start? First, make a list of all the non-members you know. Include doctors, dentists, school teachers, office workers, neighbors, and of course, family members and relatives. Okay, now what? 
Now ask yourself, how much do they know about the church? Hey, my friends at school, Joey and Clark and those guys, they don't even know anything about the church. They don't even know any Mormons except for me. The guys at the office, well, a few of them know some other Mormons besides me, but they don't know much about the church either. The neighbors around here do know a little about the church, and I think they like what they know. Each of your friends is on a little different level of interest and knowledge about the church, right? You can say that again. Once I asked a boy at school if he wanted to take the missionary lessons. He looked me straight in the eye and said no. It was awful. I felt so dumb. That doesn't mean he didn't want to hear anything about the gospel. He just needs you to send him a message geared to his interests. Look at it this way. Every one of your friends is at a different point in accepting the gospel. Your job is to discover where they are and then give them the information they need so the Spirit can touch them and help them progress. How do we do that? Through a series of messages, like I mentioned to your husband. First, they need to know that you care about them and that other members of the church care about them too. Next, they need to know that you enjoy the church and that it is a practical help to you. Finally, they need to know that you would enjoy telling them anything they would like to know about the gospel, especially how to find out the truth for themselves. But how do we keep track of all that? A record of your friends, something like this, might be helpful. If you have the printed form, My Record of Friends, use it. If not, write down the names of your non-member friends on a blank sheet of paper. Do not write anything else at this time. As you write their names, think about where they are in their knowledge of the gospel. If you're prayerful, the Spirit can guide and inspire you. Stop the tape, thoughtfully make your list, then start the tape and go on. I'm a Mormon who cares about you. This is the first message and the ongoing message with everybody you meet. You mean I have to tell my friends I love them? Not tell them. Show them. Invite Joy to do things with you. Be nice to him. Talk to him a lot. And tell him you're a Mormon. After a while, he'll get the message. He'll feel you care about him. That's what I need to do with a guy at my office. He almost seems to avoid Mormons. I've been trying to get him into a gospel conversation, but I guess he's just not ready yet. Now you're catching on. I am a Mormon who cares about you. Hmm. I can show him that he can trust me and that I'm really interested in him. Then what? The next message is, other Mormons care about you too. Create situations where your friends can do things with other church members, in groups. Wait a second. When are you supposed to give the second message? As soon as your friend starts to respond to your friendship, when he starts to seek out your company, then plan situations where he can feel that other Mormons care about him too. Hey, yeah. Joy could play on our team. Then he'd meet lots of Mormons. I see what you mean about being kind of ongoing. You've got to keep showing you care, don't you? Even if your friend doesn't want to go any further in learning about the gospel. Definitely. That's love unfeigned. If you really care, you won't want to ever close the door on your friendship. And sometime later, after he's felt the influence of the Spirit, your friend may be ready to go on. On your record of friends, Mark the boxes opposite the names of your friends, indicating those to whom you've sent the first two messages. I am a Mormon who cares about you, and other Mormons care about you too. Discuss your answers with your priesthood leader. Stop the tape, follow these instructions, then start the tape and go on. We enjoy our church activities, 
The messages about the church are the ones you give when your friend is pretty comfortable about the fact that you and your friends are Mormons. I think the Harrises are at that point, and so are a lot of the other neighbors. You mean I should tell Adele about some of the activities we've been having in Mutual? Yes. I thought she'd think I was being rude to talk about something she's not involved in. Not if you don't dominate the whole conversation. Your friends want to know what you've been doing and what you're excited about, just as you'd like to know about them. All right. I'm going to tell Mike about our winter camp with the Varsity Scouts. Maybe he'll want to come, too. Or you can invite him. That's part of sending him messages about the church, you know. Inviting people to church activities? Uh, that's the part that's always scared me off before. Then pray. Ask the Lord to help you. Remember, it's not your job to convert your friends. The power of the Spirit does that as your friends recognize the truth. All you have to do is help them keep progressing in their knowledge about the gospel. Well, I suppose I could invite them to the elders' party next month. Would you and uh, Carol like to come? You would? He does. They will. Your church is a big part of your life, isn't it? As your friend begins to recognize your involvement in the church, tell him some of the ways the church helps you. The next message is, the church is a practical help to me. Yes, it really is. It helps me to be a better father, I think. And I'm sure grateful for that. You know, I could say many things like that to some of the parents I run into at school. How'd it go, Carol? We're going to have to try family nights or something like you do. We need to have a long talk with Joey. They've surely helped us. Our home evening really brings us closer together as a family. There's an opportunity here, and many times, to pick up on someone's interest and to invite them to an appropriate church activity. Hey, Adele, we're having a demonstration on dance aerobics and mutual next week. Want to come? OK, what time? Our ward basketball team's having a practice Saturday morning. We could use another player. Do you want to come? Yeah. After you get them out to a church activity, or they show a sincere interest or ask something about the church, then it's going to be natural to get a gospel conversation going, right? On your record of friends, mark the boxes opposite the names of your friends, indicating those to whom you've sent the messages, we enjoy our church activities, and the church is a practical help to me. Discuss your answers with your priesthood leader. Stop the tape, follow these instructions, then start the tape and go on. I would enjoy telling you anything you want to know about the church. Give this message when your friend starts asking questions or when he shows any interest in what you have told him about the church. And to think I was trying to get the guys at the office to go from stage zero to a gospel conversation without anything in between. No wonder I was having such a hard time. I enjoyed hearing a little about your temples. I've always wondered about those. Bert, I'd enjoy discussing them with you. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate your being such a good friend. I've got something I'd like to know. Do you really think being married in the temple makes any difference in your marriage? I mean, day to day. I really do. Why don't you come over for dinner tonight and we can talk more about it. You can find out for yourself that the basic principles of the gospel are true. Your friend is ready for this message when he starts to speak about the church seriously. You know, the idea of being married for eternity makes a lot of sense to Carol. But how can you be sure that families can be together after death? I suppose you just believe what you believe, right? No, Bert. Actually, we don't just believe these things. 
We know them as facts. And there's a way that you and your family could find out rather quickly. For yourselves, if these basic principles of the gospel are true. There are some young men, missionaries, in our area who work full time to teach people the gospel. They have a series of short discussions. We could invite them and you over here for an hour next Sunday night. Would that be good for you? Thanks for Thanks coming so over. Much. Thanks a lot. Bye. Wow. I can't believe I really said that. You know, this business of helping people progress through different stages, it makes missionary work, well, natural. I told you you probably knew this all along. You just didn't put it into practice. And by the way, you can ask that question anytime about whether they want to find out for themselves if the basic principles of the gospel are true. Some people may be ready for that when you first meet them, and others, like the Harrises or your office friends, they may take more time. Uh, here's the stuff you gave me to read. Thanks. Do you want to keep any of it? Well, yeah, this one pamphlet, if it's okay. Sure. You know, it's funny. We had it laying around for a long time, and then last week, something prodded us both to read it. The influence of the Spirit helping him progress. Now, if we just keep doing our job. Maureen, this is Carol. We're having some real family problems, and I just need to talk to someone, and I, I know you put such an emphasis on the family with your church, and... Do you want me to run over? If you could. I'll be right there. Oh, dear Father, please help her heart to be open to thy spirit. And thank thee for helping us help her along the way. Oh, Adele, I'm so excited for you. Remember, determine where each of your friends is in accepting the gospel. Decide which message is appropriate for your friend. Give the message. When your friend is ready, give the next message. And the next message. Ask for help often. Mark the boxes opposite the names of your non-member friends, indicating those to whom you have already sent the message, I would enjoy telling you anything you want to know about the church. Then contemplate how you will present to them the message, you can find out for yourself that the basic principles of the gospel are true. Now, prayerfully review your entire record of friends and write down your plans. Listen to the promptings of the Spirit. Discuss your plans with your priesthood leader. Then, go out and do it. Report your progress regularly to your priesthood leader. And now, if your joy will be great with one soul that you have brought unto me under the kingdom of my Father, how great will be your joy if you should bring many souls unto me? Marine, we can do it. I know. <laughs>